So this is medium spicy? Yeah. Tostadas de ceviche. Oh my god. <laughs> you like so it? so good! <laughs> Salud! <laughs> What's up you guys and welcome to Foodie Mama PH. Today we're going to be having a home-cooked Mexican food feast as we were invited by Sari and Sebastian of Parientes Vagantes which is their YouTube channel. So they are travel vloggers all the way from Mexico who are based in Singapore. They're going to make for us dishes that I am familiar with and I have been tried before. So we're going to start off with tostadas de ceviche. It's going to be delicious and also they're going to make a very unique enchilada which they call enchiladas queretanas where they come from in central Mexico. Mexico, which is Queretaro. It's a very historical city and pre-Hispanic colonial city which reminds me of Intramuros. Enchiladas Queretanas, it's kind of red in color because they fry it in chili and it's one of the most, if not the most common street foods in Queretaro. And the best part is we're gonna end everything and wash it all down with mezcal which is a type of liquor that is made from agave plant. So this is going to be a very interesting experience and I'm so excited so let's go and eat some home-cooked Mexican food. ceviche and the other is going to be what we call tiritas de pescado that's what done with white fish and we already prepared it it's going to be raw fish so or do you have a problem with raw fish not at all and we also have shrimp uh, the, the white fish white in this fish. case we use a snapper we're going to do it separately because it's two different types and of course there's like 20 million types of ceviche actually ceviche is from peru so most ceviches are seafood okay. it implies yes. either fish or prawn it's usually raw so we're gonna put some lemon in it and then some different veggies it's raw food and it gets cooked so, with the acid of the lemon so let's start with the fish one you have to cut it in like the as fine strips as you can cut it in so sebastian is gonna do the fish the ceviche fish because that is a specialty so then you pick like uh, this kind of limes and then you just get going. It uses a lot of it. So I'm cutting some chilies. On the ceviche in Mexico, we like chili in basically everything. The basics for ceviche is chili, lime, and cilantro. Most of the dishes will come with the sauce on the side. Okay. So you can just put whatever you want. Now we have the chilies. So um, let's do, I think, uh, half, I think. half of this, I'll put yeah. it in. So now that you have that, we will do the purple onions. You cut it in such a way that it's also like fine strips. And here I'm cutting, cutting some coriander. For all the Mexican food, we always use cilantro. Now that we put the onion in, I think we only start mixing it all together again. So this one, we just use the snapper that we could get here. But in Mexico, if you would were to eat this, it's almost always mahi-mahi. I don't know if you know mahi-mahi. It's also called dolphin fish, I think. It's like the traditional, like the best one you could get. So I'll put the cilantro. And and then after this, putting a bit of salt, black yes. pepper. One more thing, Sarit likes to put a bit of olive oil. <laughs> Secret number two, it's olive oil on your ceviche. That was a bit... The idea is that once that's done, you would just let it sit for like 40 minutes, 30 minutes on the fridge. So let's do the other one. This is already pre-cooked shrimp. Pre you can buy it in any store. So let's put the lime. For this one, we're gonna put some avocado and tomato. Oh. So we do it in yeah, this. Yeah. So, so to cut it in cubes, I just do this. And then you take it with a spoon. Then olive oil. I like to put a lot of olive oil, actually. And this is going to be... We're gonna let it sit while we prepare the main dish. For guacamole, we're gonna need also tomatoes. So it's basically the same ingredients. So it's the avocado is good, like this one. 
then wow. it should be easy. So I use a fork to just smash it. So we will smash everything and then we just pour in the rest of the ingredients. So you're already smashed. So you want this kind of texture for the guacamole. Then you put a little bit of salt. All right, so Sebastian and Sari has already prepared two types of ceviches. We're doing seafood ceviche right now. One is fish, very simple, Sebastian's version. He says it's very purist and a lot of lime. And Sari prepared the second ceviche, which is camarones, shrimp ceviche with so many onions, um, tomatoes, there's avocado, lesser lime and more olive oil. So we're so excited for that. We're gonna have them for starters. I can't wait. So you want to prepare yours? Yeah, 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 you prepare yours. Foundation is mayonnaise, basis of everything. So <laughs> this is the tiritas de pescado, first type of ceviche. So the idea is you put the mayonnaise, put whatever the ceviche it is that you like on top of the mayonnaise, and then you top it off with a bit of guacamole like that. And then you have like your selection of salsas. You can pick like one that's more spicy, one that's less spicy. I'll take the habanero one. So I already have mine. I'm gonna have it, otherwise it gets soggy. So let's do it. Yeah. Mm. It works. This is good. Yeah, so this is a typical ceviche in Mexico. There's many ways to eat this. So this one usually is in the coast of Mexico. So this is more from the Pacific side. Pacific side, and this one I don't know, but we eat it everywhere. I'll try your this version. This is our style. Not everyone does this, but we like mayo with lime. It's not the usual one. The tiritas de pescado, and then you top it with guacamole. I want to mention that Sebastian tostada disappeared. <laughs> oh yeah, where did it go? <laughs> it it totally. <laughs> so this is medium spicy? Yeah. Tostadas de ceviche. Oh my god. <laughs> you like so it? So good! <laughs> I love the texture of the fish. It's like marinated in the lime. Then the crunch from the onions. Creaminess from the guacamole. So good. Buenísimo. 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 <laughs> So I know that ceviche is already going to be an acidic type of dish mm -hmm. So I kind of got excited when you use mayonnaise because I love balance and everything And it's just very vibrant Ceviche, is, I feel like it's like a good summer dish yeah. It's very refreshing This is something we have when we have a hangover mm -hmm. It's just very good This cool. usually goes well with a beer so we do one once a beer yeah. 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 Can we drink a beer? Yeah. Um, uh, okay, then let's do that What is cheers in Mexico? Salud Salud Salud, Salud. Salud. <laughs> <laughs> Everything is fresh. Mexican food and Singaporean beer. Singaporean <laughs> beer. You know how to make it Mexican? Putting lime. <laughs> the Mexicanized Singapore local beer. Beer. Salud. 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 <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna do a mixto. Oh, so good. <laughs> Mm. Now this one we can eat while binge watching. I think you're gonna like Crónicas del Taco. Yeah, that's a good one. It's, I think I've watched it already. It's so good. Tacos isn't it? Al Pastor. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love it because it actually that represents kind of in a good way the Mexican tacos. Mm. All of the Mexican stuff here, we he should be sponsored. sponsored or actually. <laughs> There's a Mexican grocery store. Yes. What's the name of the La Mexicana? La Mexicana. So we're gonna make the salsa for the enchiladas. In this case, the Mexican style contains dried chilies. This is Mexican chilies, guajillo, garlic, and onion, and then oregano. To do the chilies, we will have to put them in water so it has to get soaked, and then you remove the seeds. Once you remove the seeds, you put them on your pan, toast them a little bit just to bring out the flavors, and then you put them in water again. You can just liquefy together with the garlic. Then I'm gonna liquefy this one if you want to take a shot. But we have to strain the sauce because there's a lot of big pieces. You strain everything. So you're gonna throw this away. So this is the paste of the refried beans. That's the texture you want. We cook them in slow heat. 20 to 30 minutes uh, slow and there you go. Like I mentioned, it's fried enchilada. So I'm gonna use vegetable oil with high heat. This is the tortillas we find here in Singapore. You want your tortillas not fresh. You want them cold so that they can capture the salsa that you're gonna fry them. Then you just dip it here. And then 
I'm gonna take this for safety. <laughs> is less than a minute. That's why you want them hard because they get soaked and they can get broken. I have already boiled the potatoes and the carrots and we have to fry all these. What you want to do here is that once you have the fried tortilla, you put in your chicken, your filling. So you have your filling in there and then you just take it and then I'm gonna put a bit more. So it's more thin. And then you just like very tightly wrap them up. Yeah, so we're gonna have enchiladas, very traditional dish in Mexico. And this specific type, it's from Querétaro, where we are from. Basically, it's corn tortillas, it's fried on chili. So that's the difference because usually enchiladas will come with rolled tortilla and then you put the salsa on top. In this case, it's gonna be fried together with the salsa. This dish is usually not prepared at home. You usually go out and buy it. It's, very, street food. it's a bit street food. And yeah, that with beans and hopefully it's gonna be good. <laughs> so enchiladas is like... It's with chili. With chili. Oh, okay, that, okay. That's the meaning. The most traditional one is the one with cheese. Yes, for okay. this kind of enchilada because there are others that usually have chicken. That's the problem because it's like a, such a time-consuming dish. Like Correct. by the time you get the first one out. Like mm -hmm. the, <laughs> the way they do in the like street food style. Yeah, right? street food they will just prepare it, boom, 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 and serve it to you. Like, fresh and hot. Fresh and hot. So the tortilla, you dip in, what do you call it, chile? Salsa. Salsa, you call it salsa. Salsa. It makes a huge difference. I've never had anything like this uh, before. I actually went for not so spicy today. So I like that. Everything is fried. I mean, we get a lot of fried foods in Filipino cuisine, so we're fine with that. What cuts through is the use of the sour cream. Mm -hmm. So I love the addition of that. Mm. I am Cretano and I approve this. <laughs> is this um, flavor or something that you will find in Philippines? Well, the potatoes and the carrots. I personally like it all things in one bite. I think the chicken is a bit drier. You need to add more of those three colors for fritos to yes. remove the chicken dry yeah. <laughs> Put some moisture in it. This is something we usually eat in Mexico when it's the Independence Day. In September, around this time, well, last month, this is the dish that we go to. Yeah. Cabazos like tortas. Mm -hmm. So, fun fact, Cinco de Mayo is not Mexican Independence Day. <laughs> it's actually the 16th of September. Yeah. yeah, and people always confuse that yeah. because Cinco de Mayo is the most famous one. Yeah. And do you have any Mexican celebrations in Philippines like or Mexican influence at all? Not necessarily or specifically Mexican, but like the influence of having fiestas, you know, is always there. Family gather during Christmas because uh, it's a Christian country. Mm -hmm. So we would gather over food, especially over lechon, mm -hmm. uh -huh. which is roast suckling pig, not necessarily the lechon de leche. Pig. That's what I thought about lechon, yeah. So lechon in the Philippines in general is just a pig that has been roasted. Eat it with rice. Our sauce called liver sauce or either vinegar sauce. Liver? Yeah, liver like sauce. From the liver of the pork. Mm. Wow. In Mexico we had like different Christmas dishes but recently we get like the turkey from American influence. It's a heavy dish this one. It I is very heavy. <laughs> it's all fried. It is really a main dish. Do you want some beer? Yeah. yeah. This is really a hearty dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you won't have dinner probably. <laughs> <laughs> this is a lunch and dinner. Honestly, this dish needs to be much more hot. I mean, it's good, but it could be better. So good. It is something new to us, so. <laughs> yeah. So which one you like better, cheese or the chicken? I like the uh, creaminess of the cheese, so I go with the cheese. This type of dish we would only see in the streets of Queretaro. The potatoes were so good. I'm glad that you boiled them beforehand because they're so soft and then so mm -hmm. weak. Yeah. Both no. of you finish completely weird. Like, um, <laughs> they're a bit smaller. It's okay, it's okay. Uh, how do you say you're full in Mexican? So lleno. Lleno? Lleno. 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 
Is it true that there's parts of the Philippines that still speak Spanish? Oh, like yeah, a whole? yeah. They're called Chavacano. Chavacano? Yeah. Mix of, of Spanish and Filipino language. But mostly Spanish. So if you go there, you speak Tagalog, they don't understand? But I think it's mostly not with the area, but with the family. Younger generations wouldn't speak Spanish much, but they would understand because their grandparents would talk to them in Spanish. Mm. I would say I speak Tagalog. So we're mostly from the city itself. Mm. Ah, okay. Yeah, so we're not from the province. Those from the province would have a different punto or like accent. Accent, accent yeah. Punto. punto. Uh -huh. It's interesting because I would like to go to Philippines and listen to all of you guys speaking and I'm sure there are more words in Spanish than you know that it's in Spanish. But not all of them are used in the same way. So, yeah. Querida, what is querida? It's like dear. Like dear. Dear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the Philippines, is the third party. Yeah, it's a also like, a, like an affair. Yeah, like an affair. Like yes. the affair. Yeah. So you oh. cannot say my querida. Yeah. Oh, really? yeah. No so one says you like. You would refer to your querida as your like uh, second lady or whatever. Uh, you yeah. will hear the yeah. term querida in gossip. It's como la amante. Ah, la amante. Yeah. A little glass of mezcal. What is mezcal? Uh, we're not experts, <laughs> so don't quote us on any of this. But my <laughs> understanding is that uh, it's a pretty similar drink to the tequila. So it comes from an agave plant. The main difference is that the agave in this one is uh, wild, so it grows on the fields and then they roast it before they ferment it. So it has like a more of a smoky taste than tequila. We actually like it more than tequila. First of all, it was difficult to find it here in Singapore, but lately there's been a boom about mezcal everywhere. And now we can find it here, but it's quite expensive and you usually drink it straight. Just sip it. Not a shot, yeah. It's, it's not a shot. Okay. A little by little. Just the smell of it. It smells like 45 percent. <laughs> We're still being able to go home. Are you yeah, driving? I know, no. <laughs> It's something that people do on the little town. That's why it's very expensive. Okay. Salud. 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 First mezcal ever <laughs> for me. <laughs> Wow. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it's a different thing, right? I couldn't believe that was just a sip. It just touched the tip of my mouth. Can taste the similarity to tequila. It, this is a magical drink. That's yes. what, how we call it in Mexico. It's magical. Usually when you drink mezcal in Mexico, have a beer on one hand, the mezcal on the other, and there's always a plate with this orange. And usually the orange has the sal de gusano, which is the chili with the salt and with the worm in the mezcal plant crushed all inside. But here we just put a chile that's called chile tajin, and you can buy it in any store. Similar taste to the sal de gusano, but not exactly the same. Tajin. Take a sip of the mezcal, and then you would take one. Oh! <gasps> oh! Yeah. Salud! Salud. Mm. A lot better. Yeah. So what do you guys usually drink in Philippines? We have the San Miguel beer. More beer, more yes, beer. Yes. The local one, which is fermented coconut juice. We call it the banana. Make how that sounds Fermented like. coconut. We would have tanduay rum. We don't make tequilas. Mm. We're more beer people in the Philippines. And the cheap jeans. Mm. <laughs> Gin, yeah. For us, I think it's more mezcal, tequila, rum. What are your favorites like from the dishes that you cook today? For me, it was mm. like the ceviche. For me, ceviche. for me too, ceviche. So both in particular. For me, it was the tiritas de pescado, the one without the prawn, like the fish one. So. Because he cooked because it. Because I cooked it. <laughs> I have to say I like both. I love tiritas de pescado always, every time we cook them. And I also like the one with chunks of avocado mm. and so on. But for me, it's more important that you tell us which one do you like the most. Okay, so everything is a first as a homemade Mexican food for us. Tostada is very rare that we get to eat that because we mostly eat the tacos, you know, the commercialized Mexican dishes that you get in Mexican restaurants because usually it's like... Hard shell, you know? Yeah, the, the hard shell one. So tostada with both of the ceviche, I love them 
equally with the guacamole. I love all the textures, the vibrancy of it. Everything was refreshing. And the mayonnaise. And the ma <laughs> mayonnaise. <laughs> oh, especially the mayonnaise. I love the contrast of the heaviness from the mayonnaise and the tanginess from the rest of the flavor. The enchilada. I love the color and how the taste of the chile is incorporated into the tortilla. I love everything on the side as well, the frioles and fritos. And then the lettuce. It just cuts through everything because everything is fried. Yeah, I love everything that you cooked today. <laughs> and of course, ending it with the mezcal. <laughs> with a nice we mezcal. <laughs> Best way to end the Mexican meal. So, salud. 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 Gracias. 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 Hasta la próxima. <laughs> Till the next time. Bye bye.